Hi everyone and welcome back to the Plant Stock channel. Hope you guys are doing well. So today I thought I would talk about the recent news or recent, it's actually kind of old news in these times regarding the very good butchers. They came out with some news on Wednesday regarding the acquisition of the cultured nut. And I know it's basically old news now and I'm sorry about that. I was planning to put out a video on Thursday, but uh, it was my birthday at that time. So uh, I felt like, hmm, maybe I should just relax a little and spend some time with my family. So you, you'll have to forgive me, hopefully. But I did think that even though I will talk about what this means for the company, give you some fresh ideas and some thoughts that I have concerning this, I also thought I wanted to talk about their potential stock price in the years to come. Now, normally I don't like to talk about stock prices because it's just speculation, right? But we can have some kind of idea, uh, depending on their potential revenues, where they could actually, where we could see them land in a few years from now. But as I think that you guys are accustomed to now, before we really get to it, I would really appreciate an early thumbs up since it does help with the algorithm reaching more people, right? And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and you wanna keep getting information regarding the very good food company or other plant-based stocks, make sure to subscribe now, right? And don't forget that bell button. All right, guys, thank you. Truly appreciate you. So before we really get to it again, let's take a quick look at the stock chart. Ticker symbol, very in the Canadian sec. And as you know, there's also a OTC version in American dollars, which is ticker symbol VRYYF. And if we take a look at the last couple of days, it's been a rough ride up and down, but usually down sooner or later. And I think we've talked about it. What is, what is it dependent on? And I think it is what's going on regarding the interest rates in the U.S. especially, considering that the Fed is going to give out a stimulus package of $1.9 trillion. And that normally follows by a, a raise in the interest rates. Yet it does seem that it is an overreaction, considering that the Fed has said over and over, and as of late as well, that they're not doing it anytime soon, considering the huge unemployment, right? And they want more consumption out there. And no one would win if you know they raised the interest and no one is actually buying anything, right? So, uh, so me personally, I wouldn't worry about it. I trust in what they say at the moment. We'll see. I don't have that experience, of course, from the U.S. I don't live there, but we'll see what happens. So if we take a look at the news now, the very good food company completes acquisition of the culture nut. And this came out on Wednesday, right? So... Uh, yeah, we talked about this on this channel just a couple of weeks ago, or more like five or six weeks ago, that they were planning to acquire the company, but there wasn't anything that was written in stone. And now it seems that it actually has happened. This is good news, of course. Uh, and what is the cultured nut? It's a plant-based cheese company with multiple innovative products in the market. And we've also shown this before, but for the ones who hasn't seen this, if we look at the current company, the cultured nut, uh, yeah, a bunch of different cheeses that is made uh, primarily of cashews and they have the sharp and sassy which is a white cheddar style cheese uh, then we have the rascal sriracha medium cheddar style and then a captain pepper jack and then we have the otima which are, is some form of mozzarella style cheese i guess uh and a good uh good a good a yep we talked about this before good a i'm guessing that's the canadian humor there uh it's a smoky gouda style cheese and then we have the delish with garlic and then some creamy casanova some cream cheese going on there and some plant-based butter right and as I think that many of us were expecting is that Very is going to change the name from Cultured Nut to a new brand called the Very Good Cheese Company. And that's something that the CEO, Mitchell Scott, has been talking about for the last half year or year or so. That is the reason why when the Very Good Butchers IPO'd, they didn't keep the name the Very Good Butchers. 
which is the brand of the meat alternatives, but the very good food company, because they were planning already to move into other sectors like dairy sector then, right? So it's going to be called the very good cheese company. Good name, I guess, but I've been wondering myself because there are talking about that they're going to start producing other forms of dairy products as well. For me, it would make more sense that would be the very good dairy company or something like that. Or maybe the name dairy is something that is a problematic at the moment. We'll see. And some other information is disclosed that I find very interesting is that the wholesale price of this product, the cheese product, is around four dollars per unit right and they intend to produce about a hundred thousand units per month in 2021 and they're planning to scale that in 2022 and i find that very interesting considering that the overall revenue that we do believe that very has had the last year is about 10 million dollars right a revenue of 10 million dollars so that would make this another 50 percent in revenue if i understand it correctly because if we do take a hundred thousand units per month and times four dollars that would be if they do actually sell out every time they produce these things uh and that's obviously during perfect conditions right so let's say a hundred thousand times four that would be four hundred thousand dollars per month so per year that would be 4.8 million dollars which is basically 50 percent of the revenue now so around 15 million dollars per year but it's really hard to say now right considering that they have been maxed out with the little production facility that they have on vancouver island so it's still going to be a huge difference after this year i think considering considering the patterson facilities that is 98 million pounds that could be produced there per year and then we have the rupert facility that is around 37 million pounds per year that could be produced again on perfect conditions but that's what we're hoping we'll see in the future right so this is what mitchell scott had to say about this quote the acquisition of culture not allows very to efficiently enter into the dairy alternative space this is a significant milestone in the realization of a long-term strategy of owning several brands under the banner of the Very Good Food Company and on all major food categories providing consumer fun, innovative, and healthier plant-based alternatives to everyday animal-based products. So before I move on, guys, to my own thoughts and talking about where I do see this stock reaching in a couple of years from now, uh, let me know down in the comments what you feel about this new acquisition. Uh, what kind of potentials you see, right? So to me, this is very interesting and good news. As we know, the alternative plant-based dairy industry could potentially be a larger market than the alternative meat industry. So being able to sell products in both sectors is obviously great, and it stands to reason that it might increase the overall revenue in the years to come. What I'm really pleased about here as well is that I do believe that Vary is the only plant-based stock that actually now both produces meat alternatives and alternative dairy products, which gives them an advantage in my eyes, since they cover several sectors. If I hadn't already bought into several different plant-based companies, including Vary, of course, and if I was choosing between the ones that exist and felt that it would be really good to get some exposure from different revenue sources, I would say that the Very Good Food Company would more than likely be among the top, if not the highest on the list. I imagine the potential here. Sure, at the moment they are producing some cheeses and butter, but obviously the next step is several other dairy items. What about the very good ice cream, yogurt, creamers, and not the least, the very good milk, etc. Yup, in the long term, the revenue potential here could be immense. Now, I'm sure they will get competition from other plant-based companies in the future. Not to say the least, Oatly, that will IPO now in May, so be prepared for that. Still, as we've talked about here before, it is early days for the plant-based sector, right? There's plenty of room for many plant-based companies to make their mark. I'm not worried. What about you guys? What do you think about the competition? Let me know down in the comments.
I also find it really positive that Vary has two huge facilities with plenty of room, meaning that there really shouldn't be a problem with space and location regarding their dairy products. In fact, if I'm not totally wrong here, I do believe that the Rupert facility used to belong to Daya, the huge plant-based dairy company, which should mean that it must be standing ready to handle these formal products. But now, folks, let's take a look at some projections on the stock price. As we know, these are just some ideas based on typical PS ratio developments. Not a guarantee, far from it. But it's still interesting and fun as a speculative method. I want to point out, though, this is without taking the new dairy revenue into account. So this could actually look better in the future. Time will tell. I just want to point out that before we get to this, uh, it is hard to get the 100% correct information, 100% correct numbers when it comes to these details. Considering that if you go into the very good, uh, very good page, you get into a trading view there, then you go into the Canadian SEC or Yahoo Finance. They all seem to have different numbers when it comes to outstanding shares. So uh, this is based on Yahoo Finance. So even though it might be different uh, according to how many shares they have outstanding right now, it's still the same principle. So uh, bear with me here. So according to Yahoo Finance, the outstanding shares is around 85 million shares at the moment, right? And the current stock price, as we know, is 584. Now this is Canadian dollars, just so we know what we're talking about here. And the market cap is almost $500 million. Now, if we take into account, and we talked about this before, that the price per pro product, every patty, right, the alternative meat products would be around $10 in revenue, right? It's different because some are seven, some are 13, 14. So we just average it down to about $10 to make this simple. And this whole thing is to, it's actually simplified. We know that. Uh, again, it's pure speculation to some extent, but it gives us an idea what we could see in the future, right? So if we look at what the Victoria facility is expected to deliver or produce max per year, it's 1.4 million pounds per year, right? Uh, I think uh, during January, it was already up to 1.1 now. So I'm expecting it to max out this year. Then the Rupert facility down in Vancouver, it's supposed to max out around 37 million pounds per year. And the Patterson, Patterson facility down in California in the US around 98.5 million. So a total pounds per year, that would be almost 137 million pounds. And guys, these are under perfect conditions. So let's just highlight that perfect conditions that are maxing out the facilities so and that might take a couple of years right but i do expect them to get there considering the time we live in right considering that it's getting more and more about plant-based food and i think it's amazing that they have so much space already and they're prepared for the future so the total revenue per year if we count in that every product averaged down to around ten dollars would be almost 1.4 billion dollars per year in revenue and that's amazing numbers but i do see them getting there sooner or later so how do we do, so how do we find out the potential stock price then in the future well if we take a look at the ph ratio here then if we take a perfect number like one just to start with something uh, my understanding is that there really isn't any companies that we usually have a PS number of one, right? The lower, the better, usually how you value a company. Uh, but And it is, as we know, a bit different when it's value companies. But PS ratio is still interesting to look at in a way to compare different companies in the same industry sector. So this would be the plant-based sector. If you compare Vary with Beyond Meat, with Tattooed Chef, Modern Meat, and so on, then we'll get an idea when it's priced to sales, which actually looks better on paper to some extent, but depending again. So with a PS ratio of one, perfect conditions again, uh, and you then they would have a market cap of about 1.4 billion because you take you take the market cap, you divide it with the revenue per year, right? And then you get this PS number, right? Uh, then if you take the market cap 
you divide it with the outstanding shares, which is 85 million. This is the price to share we would see. So 16.10 uh, dollars. So that means that it's about uh, 3x from where it is at the moment, which is 584. So that looks pretty good, right? Yeah, something like that. Now, as you know, as we talked about, usually uh, most companies, or if not all companies, have a higher PS number. So it's where you're expecting to be in those years. So like if it has a PS ratio of five, that's where it could actually uh, land in five years from now. So would a PS ratio of five be possible? Well, I do believe it is possible, right? Because there are another company in the plant-based sector right now that has a PS ratio between six or seven, five to seven up and down. And that's the Tattoo Chef, right? And they're doing really well on paper. So that's why I think a PS ratio of five to simplify would be interesting here. And what would that mean? Well, then the market cap, and we're talking about a couple of years from here, of course, uh, but we're talking about a market cap of almost $7 billion, right? Which would mean if it's the same amount of shares, and again, speculation here, just to simplify it, that would mean that you would get an $80.5 stock. So that's a pretty good return, right? Uh, considering where it's at now, even though a couple of months ago it was around eight or nine dollars, that would be a 10x from there. But it's more than 10x now. So I think that's a pretty impressive number, uh, which I actually do see a lot of potential of reaching in a few years from now. But if we compare it to the current industry leader, which is Beyond Meat, they have a PS ratio of 22 at the moment. And if very got that number, the PS ratio of 22, right? That would mean that if they are getting about $1.4 billion in revenue per year, and we have an outstanding share, so 85 million, that their market cap would be worth around 30 billion, which would give them a price per share at $354. That's obviously amazing numbers. Do I see that happening? I, I think it's hard. Really, I really think that is hard because they would have to really compete on a global scale massively. I don't think it's impossible. I really don't. But it is hard, and it'll take time to get there. Uh, but uh, it is an interesting perspective, no doubt. And keep in mind, there are plenty of people out there who actually feel that Very is a lot better than beyond meat especially because they feel that it's more of a whole foods approach right so people are going to care more about whole foods in the long term and i do agree with that meaning that it is a better company than beyond meat and who knows they could take market share from beyond meat in the future again i feel that there's plenty of room anyhow so i'm not worried about that and also i don't think it's impossible i think it's actually very possible that beyond meat is going to reach the more and more whole foods approach with time especially with some products right because they're not going to stand still as very won't stand still so it's going to be a very interesting time to follow for sure well guys that was it for today i truly hope you found some value in today's video and if you did, as always, please smash that like button since it will help deliver this message to more people. And that's what we know, right? We'll all win because of that. Uh, but also, you know, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do because I'm going to keep delivering information regarding very good food company and other plant-based stocks, as you know. And as I'm sure that you're all accustomed to by now, this was not financial advice. This was just my own thoughts and philosophies, some speculation today too. Uh, it's important to do your own due diligence and always invest safe. Hope to see you soon and peace out.